is James Mathers for the Digital Cinema Society at Cinegear Expo 2023. I'm here with my friend Jay Margolis. Jay is an optical engineer that's come up with some fantastic microscope technology that he's using for cinema lenses now. Can you tell us about that, Jay? Well, yes. Um, these lenses are called, uh, we have actually have a microscope technology that we made into a series of lenses that are actually a studio in a lens case. And that's what we're showing now at this show the studio in a lens case. It has three uh, regular lenses of about 150 and 33 millimeter focal lengths, plus a macro lens that goes zero to four and focuses from infinity to about 20 millimeters. And the micro HM objective uh, focuses from infinity down to 20 inches, it keeps the focus all that distance. Same with the other lenses. We focus to infinity and we keep everything down to about three inches, six inches, or 20 inches from the front of the lens. It literally uh, focuses only once to infinity, and that's it. With the micro lens, it focuses first to infinity and then goes to 20 inches. And at that point, it can be focus pulled to 18 millimeters distance at 16 micro power, not one or two like a macro lens. So when you take all these things into account, these lenses can do force perspective, deep focus, micro to 16x, and they all are in focus on robotic arms. There's no need to program the robotic arm at all. They keep the focus all the time once they're set to infinity focus. And that's where the name infinity comes from. That's correct. That's basically it. And so the, uh, the model number of the lens is a TS-160? TS-160 because originally it was a microscope that went to 16 power. And what happened was one of the DPs called me up one day and he said, Jay, your lens is actually a micro lens. It's not just a microscope. And he had taken the first pictures ever done, cinematography ever done with this, of almonds and honey. And even that has stood up over time because he used the micro HM objective to do it, which was the exact range that it had to be used at. But in this case, uh, I, I knew immediately I had to make other lenses that could work for cinematography that were more useful to the cinematography community. So I set about doing that, and then sooner, sooner than later, we made a 45 degree and 90 degree prism that goes on the front and can be rotated for the horizon in both cases. Well, those usually uh, suck up a lot of light. How, is, how are these? Do they uh, suck up extra light? Because no, no, Noticeably, because they're one-tenth wave prisms for the 45. They're, these are really scientific instruments that we've adapted for um, cinematography. They've been around for over 15 to 20 years in the scientific and industrial community. But when we were told that the cinematography world could use these lenses, we realized that these had tremendous potentials that were just impossible to do. For example, James Wong Howe and uh, Greg Toland tried to do deep uh, focus. They spent sometimes three days to get the shot right because they closed down the iris and used tremendous amounts of light uh, with an ISO film of 100 that was made specially for them by Kodak. That was high speed film. Excuse me? Yeah, that was high speed film in those days. Well, you can do that immediately with these lenses. You can automatically do deep focus or force perspective. No sweat. You just simply do it. Simply put it on the, ca the camera and go. They're ad they are adaptable to almost every camera mount that's made. And they, as I said uh, before, uh, can be used uh, either large or small. Now, I mean, what I mean by that is when you put the in focus, or not the in focus, the, um, uh, the uh, uh, flipper device in, it elongates this thing to be a long probe lens, but it also flips the image to be upright. The image can be smaller, made smaller, uh, or the whole component can be made smaller by putting it, uh, taking the flipper out and just composing it the way it should be. In that case, you can flip the image in your camera or in post. It's, it's all possible to do. The result is that you can choose whether you want it to be a compact system or an elongated system. We have virtually, we're coming out with a snorkel lens in a few months that's certified internationally to be waterproof.
and has a hydrophobic lens, which means you dip it in the water. When you take it out, there's nothing of the water on the front of the lens. You can immediately do photography or cinematography. And as you well know, because you've used these lenses, uh, the uh, potentials are as much as anybody wants to make of them. Especially, for example, on a robotic arm. You can no longer need to pre program the robotic arm. You can just wax poetic and keep doing anything you want to do, and in, in, in post you can put it all together and you can have an amazing situation. And that's why one of the Nelsonian Awards, we have Nelsonian Awards to people who do specifically good products, information and, and so forth with these lenses. You're one of the recipients. And Cameron Cannon, who's uh, shooting our interviews today. And Cannon has been too. So um, the thing is that uh, with these lenses, um, the people can do many of the things that were not possible before. And one of the recipients this year, Adam Voris, uh, has, has done a work, I work with a, uh, a, a watch mechanism that compares directly with one of the same types of things done by this another famous photographer, cinematographer, uh, for a major company. And you can't tell the difference between them and it makes anyone po anything possible for major people, for people to do major work that they couldn't anticipate from before. Now you've joined forces with the big international company, Edmund Scientific. Can you tell us about that? Edmund, Edmund Optics now. We go back a long way, as you know, Jim. Uh, back to 1956, as a matter of fact. And the present um, CEO and, uh, well, actually, uh, president of Edmund, uh, and I go back to 30 years or so till when he joined Edmund and so forth. So it's a long-standing relationship we've had with the Edmund, even the families that, as such. And um, now it's come to wish in full circle. One, one little thing that happened was I only met the uh, original founder of Edmund, Norman Edmund, once. But I, when I had the, the chance to do it, I walked into his office and I said, Mr. Edmund, I blame you for everything that happened since 1956. <laughs> and he was taken aback. And then I explained, well, in 1956 I got the catalog, and on page such and such it did this, and on page... Later in the day, he came back to our discussions, and he brought with him a 1956 catalog in mint condition. So... That's when it was Edmund Scientific. That's when it was Edmund Scientific. And uh, it's a unique company, Edmund. They have a tremendously good reputation. Their employees all love working there. And we made an alliance now, a formality, so it, it really should have happened, and it did. That sounds great. Congratulations, and thank you so much, Jay. Thank you, Jim. Take care. <laughs>